Hi, and welcome to Season 2 of That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What created the Potomsky Crater? Who was involved in the 1963 Great Train Robbery? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts and references for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about organ transplant recipients. Claire Silvio was a professional dancer who suffered from primary pulmonary hypertension. When she was 47 years old, in 1988, Claire underwent a heart-lung transplant. The heart and lungs she received were from 18-year-old Tim Lamarand. Tim had died in a motorcycle accident. His favorite foods were beer, chicken nuggets, Snickers, and green peppers. Prior to her transplant, Claire had no taste for these things, but afterwards she developed one. She also noticed an increased libido, an attraction to curvy blonde women, a strong body odor, and she started walking more like a man. Some say this was all due to the steroids she was taking after her transplant, but that's not what Claire said. After her transplant, Claire had a dream about a tall, thin, young man named Tim L. At the time, she knew nothing about her organ donor. Hospitals don't share that information with recipients. In fact, it wasn't until 1990 that Claire was able to use obituaries to trace who her donor was. Claire found Tim's family and learned more about him. What she learned explained so much of what she was experiencing. Tim was a tall, thin young man who matched the man in her dreams. Claire wrote the book A Change of Heart about her transplant experience. She admits that some of the changes can be chalked up to her transplant medications, but not all of them. Claire died in August of 2009 at the age of 69. An eight-year-old girl received the heart of a 10-year-old boy that had been murdered. She began having vivid, recurring dreams of the murder. Her parents brought her to a psychiatrist who said that she wasn't having dreams, but instead was experiencing memories. The girl was able to describe the murderer and perpetrator so well that police were able to arrest the murderer and charge him for the crime. A 29-year-old recipient also experienced personality changes after an organ transplant. She said, You can tell people about this if you want to, but it will make you sound crazy. When I got my new heart, two things happened to me. First, almost every night, and still sometimes now, I actually feel the accident my donor had. I can feel the impact in my chest. It slams into me. But my doctor said everything looks fine. Also, I hate meat now. I can't stand it. I was McDonald's biggest moneymaker, and now meat makes me want to throw up. Actually, whenever I smell it, my heart starts to race. But that's not the big deal. My doctor said that's just due to my medicines. I couldn't tell him, but what really bothers me is that I'm engaged to be married now. He's a great guy and we love each other. The sex is terrific. The problem is I'm gay. At least I thought I was. After my transplant, I'm not. I don't think anyway. I'm sort of semi or confused gay. Women still seem attractive to me, but my boyfriend turns me on. Women don't. I have absolutely no desire to be with a woman. I think I got a gender transplant. People surrounding the woman corroborated her story. One recipient with bad lungs received a heart-lung transplant. Because his heart was still fine, it was then transplanted into another donor recipient. The recipient of his heart started exhibiting the personality traits of the donor. The recipient began being an aggressive type A personality. He also started calling his wife by the donor's wife's name. The recipient of the heart and lungs also began experiencing personality changes. He became morose. His donor was a shy and laid back person. What causes personality changes after an organ transplant? Some scientists have some theories. One theory is that the cells in our bodies have memories. This is called cellular memory. 
the theory is that the brain is not the only organ in the body that contains memories. They say memories can form in other organs as well. Fictional writers have been writing stories about the idea of cellular memory since the 1800s, before organ transplants even existed. Maurice Renard's Le Main Dorlac was the first time the idea was really popularized. Le Main Dorlac was published in 1920. In this story, the protagonist is a pianist who loses his hands in a railway accident. He receives the hands of an assassin and begins suffering from hallucinations and sinks into a depression. He believes he has become Mr. Hyde. The doctor in Le Main Dorlac was based on the real-life doctor, Dr. Alexis Carroll. Dr. Carroll won the Nobel Prize for his work on transplants and grafting procedures in 1912. Other scientists have put forth other theories about how transplant organs can cause personality trait changes. Some scientists believe that the changes are as simple as organ transplants giving recipients new life. Some believe that the changes can be chalked up to drug reactions. Still others believe the changes are caused by a subconscious influence provided by others. In 1994, Dr. J. Andrew Armour, a transplant doctor, described a heart brain, saying the heart has an intrinsic nervous system and therefore has its own memories. The cells in the heart respond to magnetic fields, and some scientists believe that lying within that activity is an undiscovered link between the heart and the brain. Pharmacologist Candace Pert believes that neuropeptides stored in every cell can transfer memories. Some believe that the changes are caused by an unprepared spirit or the spirit of a donor which is not ready to move on after death. Still others believe the changes are caused by psychic energies and organs. Personality changes in organ recipients was first studied in heart transplant recipients. These recipients experience different tastes, cravings, opinions, and other changes. A study of 47 heart transplants in Vienna, Austria, showed that 79% of recipients had no personality changes at all. The study said, in this group, patients showed massive defense and denial reactions, mainly by rapidly changing the subject or making the questions ridiculous. 15% of the recipients in the study reported personality changes due to experiencing a life-threatening event. Only 6%, or three recipients, reported personality changes due to the transplanted organs. The study said of these subjects, these incorporation fantasies force them to change feelings and reactions and accept those of the donor. What causes some organ recipients to have a change of personality after receiving their new organ? Do cells have memories? Are all these changes caused by restless spirits? Are the changes simply the result of the medications recipients take? What do you think? Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ruddy Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ruddy Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.